What's up, guys? We're going to look at day 10, advent of code. It's going to be quick, just like the last one, because I'm trying to catch up after missing a few days. Day 10 had a pretty interesting theme, which was, okay, that communication device from earlier has been broken, and it's doing these clock cycles with a tiny bit of information each time. We're going to end up using it to figure out what's going on. The information is sometimes no op, which is just like, you know, saying pass in Python, it means do nothing. And then there's add x with an argument, and we add that much, but it has a delay. So we have a cycle of nothing, a cycle of nothing, and then it finally adds it. The other trick to this one is when it's talking about where we are during a certain cycle, it's like, in between some of these steps. So like it's done some of it, but it hasn't fish officially ticked over to the next cycle yet. So whenever it asks like what's happening on cycle 20, you can't dump that at the end or the beginning. You have to think about what's officially started, but what hasn't um, paid off yet. So they just give us a big old list of these instructions. Looks kind of like this. Luckily, we can just ignore the no op because nothing happens. We were already going to increase the cycle count by one anyway. And so whenever we see these, we're just done. That, in fact, we don't even have to mention it in the code. That's great. And then the add x stuff, we have to buffer that. We have to say, hey, it's going to add, but there's a delay. And so the delay counts down. When it pops, we add this to our... Uh, they call it the X register, and then we go from there. The tough part is it's asking us to track what's happening at certain cycles. So like they say 20, and then uh, every 40 after that, which is, as I said, the tricky part was remembering that, okay, at the, in, the, in the middle of a cycle, some things have happened and some things haven't. And what I ended up writing was not very pretty, it's not like day nine where I made classes and had it all nicely named. This one is just a bunch of variables loose floating around at the top level. And so I've got a max to give us an ending. I've got, it keeps track of what line we're on and what cycle we're on, which is not the same. And we've got this register, which is like our sort of only persistent memory in the device. We got this delay, which counts down when you add. We've got the amount that we're going to add. And then these are the things that part one and part two are asking about. Part one says signal strength. So at certain ones, we're going to keep track of where we are, um, multiply it by the register, and then add those up. So part one does this right here. Let me uncomment that and then comment out the part two stuff. And then I'll go ahead and put these print. I added these print lines to test it while I was messing around. And so they'll tell you where we are along the way. Every, you know, every cycle, we'll see what's going on. And in the last one, we end up having all these signal strengths that we add up to get the answer. That one is pretty easy. Part two is where it gets fun. And I know the code doesn't look cool, but the output is really cool. So let's say. Uh, we're going to look at part two. Part two says we're going to have, oh, I messed up the thing here. Uh, part two says we're going to transfer this into a little visual thing. We've got a CRT monitor which has lines, and the lines have horizontal dimension. They're like, well, they're like lines. They have a one dimensional thing where you've got a certain sprite that could be turned on or off um, in that spot. Then we go through these signals and we see, okay, is it on or off at that spot? Which is like, they say it's three pixels wide, so we have a little leeway of uh, one off in either direction from our number. And then it ends up drawing some cool things. This was the example in the um, test data, and then when they have you run your uh, full data, it makes letters. So let's see that, because it's pretty cool. It ends up drawing six or seven letters, 
where you can see... Oh, the way I'm printing it is messed up because I have to turn off all these. All those test um, logs. So then we've got the Z-U-P-R-F-E-C-L thing, which just looks really cool. I love that uh, aspect of it. We haven't got to those yet. Like day nine, the rope bridge was a visual thing, and they showed lots of examples of the um, items moving around. But I didn't do that. I just kept coordinates as numbers, and I never actually drew it on the screen. This one requires you to draw it on the screen in order to get the... Um, I'm, I'm almost like a magic eye or something, like one of those stereograms, because um, you have to see it to uh, to believe it. And again, that was quick, because I've already written it. I'm trying to go through several of these in one day to catch up. But that was a fun one. Even though the code is not very thrilling, it's lots of small lines, small if statements, no interesting classes or functions. Um, the output was what made it fun, and I hope they have more of those in the future.